We are in the series called Daniel Plan, and uh, I hope that as you are going through it, that you are getting a taste and the vision of what you can be, what you could be. And uh, maybe for some of you, you're already um, kind of uh, Daniel Strong. You're already uh, really kind of ingrained some of those things. But if you're like me, um, then you realize that you actually need a lot of encouragement. You need somebody just to kind of help you to understand a few things. Now, I've done the Daniel plan a few times, and uh, I kind of am that kind of person that when I take something on, I kind of go full on for it. The problem is, of course, is that unless I have people around me supporting that, it's only a matter of time before I uh, swerve to rot and uh, back into the bad habits. And uh, I know that doesn't, none of you have ever experienced anything like that. Um, but, uh, but for me, so for me, uh, with the Daniel plan, it's encouraging, but that's why I think for us, starting this ministry is something that really, for me, is, uh, encourages me to think, actually, there's going to be people around me um, and all who are on it to kind of just to help each other, to be there, um, uh, for, for the process, because for me, it's not just about uh, losing weight, although uh, over the years, until I was about 40, um, I couldn't put weight on. It didn't matter what I ate. Um, I was um, nine and a half stone till I got married. And then married life changed that, um, and I went up to ten and a half. And I stayed at 10 and a half until I was in my 40s. Then when I was in my 40s, I started doing some long fasts. Now, long fasts, they change your metabolism. And so as a result of that, I then started to put weight on very quickly. And, um, and so I've now got a good storage capacity. And, um, and so people say, oh, you know, I, I often, I, in the face, I look healthier having weight on. But actually, I am not healthy for having all that weight on. And uh, I won't tell you what I uh, do weigh, just so that you kind of go, no, oh, Jonathan! Um, but I can assure you it's more than you probably think I weigh. Because often when people are taller, they don't show the weight that's on. If you're shorter, often you just put an ounce on and people go, you put weight on! Um, so, so it's not, again, it's not about weight, the Daniel plan. Um, it is about health. But obviously, as um, Claire said this morning, it's the, the healthy thing. Well, either you'll either put weight on or you'll lose weight, depending on where you are. It is about a health, uh, healthy issues, and I think that's fantastic. So, um, but one of the things that we've got to have before anything else is we've got to have the vision for change. And um, I, I, when I was thinking about the, today, today I'm going to talk about setting goals. But if you don't have a vision, then what are you going to set goals about? So the first issue is you've got to have a vision in your life for how you want to see life in the future. Uh, you want to have some long-term vision, long-term objectives of how you want to be. Now that, obviously, we are emphasizing health for a few weeks, but the issue is about every area of our lives. So it's, it's a vision for your finances, it's a vision about your career, it's a vision about your relationships, it's a vision for you, how you want to be in your relationship with God, how you want to be in your relationship with other people, whether, that's, uh, whether you're married or whether it's with children or parents, uh, whether it's with people in your workplace, there's no in it. any area of your life, it requires you to have a vision. Before there is a vision which is on the inside, it's an invisible concept of a preferred future. When you have a vision, then you can set some goals. So today I'm presuming that you have a preferred future, that you have a vision of how you would like to see things to be. If you don't, then you need to get that first before the things that I'm going to talk about today often apply because you can't set a goal towards something if you don't know what that something is, yes? So if you want to go somewhere in life, you've got to know where you're going, yes? Before you think about how am I going to get there? And uh, so I'm gonna talk about goals and I'm gonna talk about it pre pre predominantly as long-term goals. You might prefer to think of that as objectives, uh, maybe, or plans. 
um, but I'm going to use the word goals, but I'm aware that often goals can be, you can have little goals to help you to achieve a larger goal. So just so you're aware of that in it. But, it, the, but if the first element of us being able to change is vision, the second element that we need is faith. We've got to have the belief that we can change. We've got to, you know, we've got to have that uh, sense in us and that understanding that yes, I can do this. I can be different, I can achieve this, I can do this, I can become this, uh, whatever that might be in his life. So that is the second element of change. And so that's what I want us to talk about today because unless you believe you can change, you're never gonna set a goal for change. And so that is what I want us to, uh, to look at uh, today. So the big question you might be asking, why do I need to set goals? You might be, uh, you know, I've talked to people over the years and some of the people, oh, I don't set goals. I don't see the need for it. I don't. And, uh, and I kind of inside me, I'm thinking to myself, no, goals are good. It's good. But I haven't often thought it through about why goals are good. And uh, because often you just either, sometimes we set goals so often without thinking we've set a goal, but we have done because it's something that we're wanting to achieve. So you might be saying to yourself, well, I'll, um, I'd like to learn, um, you know, to do, uh, learn a language. Well, what's the reason you want to learn a language? What's the why behind it? But often we don't think about that. just think, oh, I'd like to be able to speak German or something like that. And so you enroll on a core course and then you do that. And if you find it too difficult, oh, blow that. Do you, do you know what I mean? But if you enjoy it, you stick with it. There's all sorts of things in it. So back, but regardless, there's, there's still something inside all of us that desires to improve, desires to change, desires to become better, to, to become more than what we are. And so the first thing about goal setting is, is uh, the, for, for why we should do it is because it is a spiritual discipline. It is a spiritual uh, discipline. Just like prayer, just like fasting, just like giving, and just like serving. That might astonish you, but goal setting can be a spiritual discipline. It can be an act of stewardship because you set financial goals, goals to give more, goals to bless more, goals to have more in order to be able to bless other people. It can be an act of worship. In other words, you set some goals to glorify God. You set some goals in your personal life, it may be in your daily life, in your weekly life. There are certain things that you might set goals. You said, I'm going to set a goal to be at Connect Group every week. That could be, that's a spiritual goal that is going to be about glorifying God. It can be an act of discipleship. So you maybe have a spiritual habit that you do and daily prayer time, daily readings, study of the word, memorizing the word of God, meditating on the word of God, whatever it might be. It can be an act of fellowship. In other words, group goals, things that you want to do with people uh, in your connect group or as a church, whatever. There can be fellowship goals. In other words, it's important to realize that it, it can, goal setting can be a spiritual discipline. You see, there are, you can use your time, use your life in different ways. You can waste your life, you can spend your life, or you can invest your life in three different ways that you can use your time. And I want to say it's good to invest your life for something bigger than your life. Invest your life in something that's eternal, something that's got longevity to it, yes? But, but to do that, you've got to remember, it is your choice. It is your choice on how you spend your time, how you spend your money, how you invest uh, in your life. It's your choice. Are you going to invest over this next year, over this next 10 years? Are you going to invest in yourself? Are you going to invest in your marriage? Are you going to invest in your connector? Are you going to invest some goals in the future of what you want to develop? You see, I found that there are three types of people. Well, they always say there's three types of people in the world, don't they? There's people who make things happen. There's people who watch people make things happen, isn't there? And then there's people who have no idea what's happening. <laughs> and then there's, of course, a fourth group of people. And they're the people who criticize the people who are making things happen. And it's so easy to be critical of things, isn't it? It's so easy 
to do that. And so I believe that we need to be a people who make things happen. Make that this year, the start this year, for this decade, uh, should the Lord tarry, that you're going to live with some goals in your heart and in your life to be better, to accomplish more for God. You see, the other issue is, is God is a goal-setting God. He sets goals. He has a plan. He has a future. I want to say to you that the whole of history is heading somewhere. It is heading towards um, uh, big events. Uh, we read about in Revelation. It, it's heading towards a judgment. It's heading towards a new heaven and a new earth. It's heading somewhere. God is a planner. He's already planned certain things. There are some things that God has planned that have, uh, haven't happened yet, but he's got some goals that are going to happen, and we can read about them in the Word of God because we know that as in the Old Testament, he said this and this and this is going to happen, and they did happen, so we can know that God is going to make certain things happen. So God has certain things happen that have not happened yet. God has some goals for us as a church that have not happened yet. God has got some goals uh, for, for, for you and me that have not happened yet. He's got some spiritual growth for you and for me that have not happened yet. And uh, so we've got to understand that, that God is a planner. He doesn't, he doesn't just do things accidentally. In the very intricacies of life, he has a plan. He has a plan for your life. He has a plan for, for this church. He has a plan for each church in town. He has a plan for the church worldwide. He's got a plan uh, and, and he is going to work for that. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 10 says, God plans to bring all of history to its goal in Christ. Then Christ will be the head of everything in heaven and on earth. I want to say to you, history is not circular, it is linear. In other words, it's not like the Buddhist concept of reincarnation. It's not like you're going round and round and round. Now, I understand there are seasons. There's summer and there's spring and there's autumn and there's winter. Not that way round, I might add. But, uh, but there are seasons. I understand that. But at the end of the day, history is going somewhere. God has got a plan. And so he is, he is making all of history that it comes to its goal in Jesus Christ. And so he works on all of things. The second thing is about goals, is goals focus our energy. They help us. Focused energy is powerful. And I mentioned that the other week about light and how when light is concentrated and it is focused, it is powerful. And so we've got to understand that it enables you to focus when you've got some goals. If you've got a goal to do something, to learn something, or to kind of achieve something, you want to go somewhere with your life, you can be like the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 9. He says this, I do not run without a goal. I fight like a boxer who is hitting something, not just the air. But the Apostle Paul knew he was a goal setter. He, was, he, he had a plan. And he, if you read the New Testament, you could see the plan he had of the big cities he would go. And so he went to certain places and he, he was going on that. Then God might say to him, don't go there. But God had to... Stop him doing something. He had a plan. And so what I'm saying is if you're moving somewhere, God can redirect you. But if you're not moving and you're static in your life and you're just going through life and not wanting to achieve anything and go something, then God can't direct you. You can't direct a stationary vehicle. Yes, it has to be moving and your life has to be going somewhere. And it's so important for us. Now the issue is, is we often go around life in circles with no person purpose but we need to spend the time necessary to have a purpose to understand our purpose and we talk about our purposes all the time as a church what are the five purposes that God has for our life he has for every single person on planet earth he has the five purposes that he wants for them and so we we, we go through that regularly about those five purposes and so we need to realize to not waste our time on second class causes on things that are just time wasters and, uh, and, go, and going nowhere. You see, trivial pursuit is not just a game. It is something that too many people are just in the thing. They're just, everything's trivial. 
uh, they're not doing anything with meaning and purpose and with, a, with achievement. We have got to have uh, intentional neglect. Sometimes you need to neglect certain, certain things in order to be able to achieve things. But if you don't know what that big thing is that you're focused on, then every little thing and every Tom, Dick and Harry is able to veer you off uh, where, you, where you're going. So you need to have the goals that you're setting for in order to be able to achieve it in every way. Somebody who wants to learn to play the guitar, for example, has to stop doing some things in order to be able to do what they need to do, yes? They've got to put the time into it. There will be distractions. Now, what I'm saying to you is even the professional musicians, that when they're practicing, and they're practicing for maybe seven, eight hours a day, uh, a bit like me, no. Uh, you know, they're practicing that. What do they do? They have to have certain things they're saying no to. Well, goals enable you to say no to some things and yes to other things are they in line with God's purposes for your life. We have got to know the difference between urgent and important. You've got to know the difference. Now, you see, the thing is, the problem is the urgent is rarely important. But because it's urgent, we kind of put our energies into that and we go down that route when in actual fact we need to be understanding that the important things are often the things that, that are easy to neglect. They're the things that nobody sees so often are the important things, like spending time in God's Word. Who knows whether you have or you haven't? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Prayer time, you know, di different things. So often the important things are the unseen things and we get them the wrong way, way round. Spending time with a family, for example, is a priority. Ephesians chapter 5 says this, Make the most of every opportunity for doing good in these evil days. Let's not waste our time. Let's recognize the difference between activity and achievement. You can be busy, 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 but not achieving the things that God has planned for you, the goals that you need to be going for. We've got to know the difference between production and reproduction. We've got to know the difference between urgent and important. The world is full of distractions. I want to say to you, I'm easy be distracted. Do you know what I mean? You come down to study and you think, oh, need a cup of tea first. So you go put the kettle on, get a cup of tea. Oh, my pencil needs sharpening. And then you get your pencil sharpened and you, there's something, do you know what I'm trying to say? So it's so easy, isn't it? And of course, by the time you get down and everything's in place, you've got to go on and do something else. <laughs> and so that's how life is uh, with us. So a simple thing is to have a to-do list. It's a very simple thing, but each day have a to-do list, have a week's to-do list, whatever it might be. But we need to understand that busyness should never be our goal. Busyness is not God, and it's not his goal for our life. So the secret to an effective life is focus. We need to have goals to do that. Thirdly, goals stretch our faith. Godly goals are actually statements of faith. They affirm our trust in God. So in other words, we, if we said, I believe God wants me to accomplish this and this by such and such a date, that is a statement of faith, that what you believe in God for by such and such a time. Let's not just dream about things. And it's good to dream. Like I've said, you've got to have a vision of where you want to be. But you've got to take that, that dream and you've got to make some resolutions. You've got to make some decisions uh, in order to do it. And then you've got to set some goals on how you're going to uh, go about it. You see, a goal is a dream with a deadline. And it's important that we do that. Matthew 9 says this, according to your faith, it will be done to you. According to your faith. So the question is, a simple one is, how's your faith? How much faith have you got in God for doing for, for your future? You see, one of the things I find fascinating about such scriptures is, is that I get to choose how much God blesses my life. 
I get to choose by the faith that I have about what's going, what I'm going to believe God for, what God can do in my life, what he can do in my family, what he can do in this church. We have got to stretch our faith. You see, if you've never trusted God to do something that you know you can't do without him, then you're not operating by faith. Faith is so important. Ephesians 3 says this, God is able to do far more than we would ever dare to ask or dream of, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or hopes. God can blow our mind in what he can do. He can do far more than if you think that, you know, there's something that can't, I've done to say to you, God can do it. You think of how he has created the universe and sustains the universe into the out it reaches. It's mind-blowing to see that in the intricacies of, of the smallest, uh, smallest of cells and when you look at biology and you look at the whole makeup of the world and you see right at the center, you see that actually God has put a cross. It's fascinating to see how God has designed the world. And so he can do far bigger. And so we have got to set some audacious goals. Set some goals in your life that needs God to help. If you don't need God's help, it's not a faith goal. It's not a spiritual goal. It must need God to come through with it. You see, sometimes, you know, when we set goals and when we came to do this, people would say to her, you know, who do you think you are going for this? Well, the answer was not how good and how big I think I am. The answer is how big do we think God is? Because it's how big is he? So when you're setting goals, think, can God do this? Is this something that God can do in my life? Is this something that it makes something a big, airy, audacious goal, as they say? yes. Watch God do some miracles. The Destiny Church is a story of miracles, of believing God to do things that we didn't know he could do. You see, when we set off, that's what some of the things were. Well, so, for example, when we, do, you, do you mind me going back to the... Is that okay? For example, when we were in Skinner Street, and when I arrived at Skinner Street, the church uh, there couldn't afford my salary, which wasn't a lot in them days, and, uh, and it couldn't afford the mortgage on the building. In other words, if I wanted a pencil, I had to buy the pencil. It wasn't like I could go and, like I can today, the division, I need a pencil. And he comes back with a wad of pencils, you know. Um, so in other words, what I'm saying to you is in them days, so when God, so when God was talking is about moving uh, to, to somewhere bigger, we looked at the globe, for example. We looked at a number of uh, issues. And, uh, and when we came to this, I want to say to you that we didn't have the money. It wasn't a lot of money in them days. But if it's £10 and you haven't got £10, it's a lot of money, isn't it? And so we, 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 I didn't know what, what it was going to entail. I was a bit kind of naive, to say the least, but I believed God for things. And so when we got this thing, we, we bought this building. I know you're going to think, £80,000 we bought this place for. 80000 that's nothing, is it? Eh? And so all I'm saying is we bought for that. Now we had somebody that, that gave uh, a massive amount and, and things and, and that was fantastic. And, uh, and we had others that loaned us interest-free and things. But uh, for, for the interest-free free loan, I, I didn't know how to pay it back because we didn't have enough realistically to go. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And so I remember coming into this and we, we sold the old place and that's a long story and, um, and how the miracle of God uh, worked in that. We got double what it was, uh, what they bought it for. God, God just did miracle after miracle. And so we came in here and I'm thinking to myself, I can't afford to turn the lights on. I didn't tell anybody that, but I just, you know. And so when you come in here, there was no such thing as electricity. This, this was shut down, it was derelict, it was disgusting, it was, it was, well, how can we say there was stuff on the walls that I wouldn't let the church come in to see <laughs> until we painted them. Don't let them see that, they'll think it's demonic. And, uh, and so there was a whole issues of things. But you know what, we just went little by little. I'm going on my morning prayer walk and I'm going walking and I'm saying, Lord, and if you're not in this, I've made the biggest mistake of my life and it'll probably take me 25, 30 years to pay things this off. That's not to do it up, that's just to pay the silly thing. And so God works. And so we had this thing and then, and then we got working and then, you know, 
we, 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 we had somebody to oversee the project. Again, that was, when you look back, it was a miracle. We had somebody in the church who was a builder and he helped us and we got, got going. And then we had the council and the council sent us a boatload of, uh, of, of uh, guys that could help us and they were helping us to, to think. It took us 12 months of just ripping the place apart. We had the 40 foot kind of skips that we were just week in and week out, skip after skip after skip. And, uh, and, and so that was, so there was nothing to show except it was derelict. And so all I'm saying to you is God just supplied at every need. The builder went to college to train for something else. And then God brought another builder. And, uh, and we had another lot of set of builders. And I want to say to you, God just provides. I couldn't plan that. We spent three quarters of a million pound on this. But I didn't. I couldn't have believed for three quarters of a million when we set off. I, got, I couldn't even hardly believe for the 80,000, never mind. So all I'm saying when God does that, and you know why I announced it to the church that we're going to go, and half the church left. So what I'm saying to you is we paid a price for people here. And people come in and they don't understand the journey. And I'm not interested in them worrying about the journey. That's not their problem. But I am saying to you, there's a journey for you. And if you believe God, he can do great things. He can do greater things than you've ever asked or imagined. They will blow your mind. Because God is in the building business. He wants to build your life. He wants to build the church. He wants the kingdom of God to be extended in this place. Amen. So we've got to do that. In other words, Romans 14 says, everything that does not come from faith is sin. I wonder how many times you and I sinned yesterday. (laughs) The amount of times we do things and we're not not doing it in faith. I want to say to you, just think what God could do if we believed him, if we had the faith to trust him for new things. If you're not taking risks, you're not taking risks for God, then you're not living by faith. And God wants you to live by faith. He insists that we depend on him. That we depend on him. So let me ask you today, if you have got some goals, do they require faith? Do they require faith? And if not, then ask you, what goal should I set that would require faith? So that this morning, you'll walk out of here. Even if you can't think of something, you'll walk out of here with at least the purpose that today and this week, you're going to spend time saying, God, what is your goal for my life? What's your goal? Because his goal is 10 times better than any goal you could set for yourself. His goal is always worth doing. Fourthly, goals build our character. You see, the greatest benefit of faith goals is actually not what you accomplish, but what actually happens inside you. As you go to pursue goals, as the phrase is, as you work on your goals, God works on you. So if you want God to work in your life, get some goals and pursue those goals and watch God work in your life because he wants to develop you. He wants to develop your character. He is more interested in your character than your accomplishments. Because your character is what you're going to take with you. You're not going to take your accomplishments with you. You're going to take who you are. And so setting goals is character building. We are on a journey and make that journey meaningful and short and, and Give God something to work on in your life as you, as you go forward with goals. James says this. <clears throat> Whenever trouble comes your way, let it be an opportunity for joy. For when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be strong in character and ready for anything. While you're working on your goal, God is working on you. You see, this is, if you watch any movies or any kind of things that are going on, there's always, there's always a plot line. The plot line is that there's kind of a hero and uh, the main character and 
he, he wants to get the girl or whatever it might be. There's something to do, win the world or save the world or whatever it might be. But in the process, there are some obstacles. In the process of overcoming those obstacles, that hero, that main character changes in the process. And they become a different man, a different woman in the process in a, trying to achieve the goal. That, that, that's often the plot line of, 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 uh, of, of movies that you, you go to. You know, the plot to win the war, rescue hostages, climb Everest, or get the girl, whatever it might be. We have, um, uh, that's what the films do. And so God wants us to develop in, uh, in where we, we are. And Paul is very honest in Philippians 3 verse 12. He says, I do not claim that I've already succeeded or have already become perfect. I keep striving toward the goal for which Christ Jesus has won me to himself. What is God's number one goal for your life and for my life? God's number one goal for all of us is that we would become like Christ. That's his goal. That's what he wants to do, yes? And uh, we've got to understand that, yes? Um, <clears throat> and uh, Ephesians 4.13 says, then we will be mature just as Christ is and we will be completely like him. Amen? And I believe that's so important. Fifthly, goals give us hope. And we all need hope in life, don't we? Hope is so essential. Often we go through life and, uh, and, and we can be kind of cushioned from things and things kind of going well. But when things start to go wrong and things that you had dreamt of, things that you had hoped for don't come to pass, it's then when you, you start to realize the importance of hope. It is so essential to our very being that we have hope. Um, counseling is all about giving people hope. And some of the, uh, the greatest psychiatrists uh, will, will say that one of the biggest things that they can do for, for people that come into their, uh, in, in, into their workplace, into their uh, office or whatever it might be, is to give them some goals. Not, not just say, oh, this is a goal I've got for you, but for, to draw some goals out of, out of them. And I want to say to you, the world is full of people who have got down, they've got depressed, they're, they're discouraged, they're despondent. Um, you know, they've lost hope. Uh, and uh, and, and, and th th there's, there's medical stuff that's gone on so many times of people that have just, they've even given them stuff to try to help them. But because of they've lost hope, it's not been helping. But the moment that they get hope, they get a goal, they sense something, whatever it might be. The one I was just reading the other day, was about, uh, about, about a, a man and he had a fantastic farm and everything but he got ill and, um, and, and realized that although they'd done all the medical stuff, he was still depressed, things weren't well and uh, eventually the psychiatrist caught on to something that he really wanted which was to spend time with his son. He wanted his son to work with him on the farm. He wanted the hope that his farm would not just go to waste. And so he kind of given up hope and so the psychiatrist that. So he got his son in, talked to his son and, um, and, and uh, told him the situation. And so his son, son started working with him on the farm. They started on the tractor together. They started mending things together. They started spending time together. And within a short period of time, this man was well, he was healthy, he was vibrant, his energy gone. Why? Because he got hope. And I want to say to you and for me, you and I need hope. And our goals give us hope. Because when we set goals, we're saying there's a future. When we set goals, we're saying there is something ahead. There's something I'm believing God for. I'm believing that I'm here for a reason. I'm here for a purpose. We need hope. And I believe that's the biggest thing that we, you and I need uh, in our lives uh, to do that. I'm going to leave it there because of time. So I know that from your uh, agendas, I'm only kind of halfway through. So next week, I'll, uh, I'll carry on next week with, with this. Uh, so it gives you a week to sort some goals out so that when we come next week, you'll go, yeah, I've got my goals sorted. And then I kind of talk about what kind of goals you should have. And then you go, oh, no, I need to change my goals. <laughs> 
being the kind of guy that I am. Um, but but, it, but I, I do pray that today that you would leave here knowing that God has a plan for your life and he wants you to be stretched. He wants you to grow. He wants you to know him more than anything else. He wants you to serve him. He wants you to do these things. So maybe today you might want to start about thinking about what could I, what kind of goals should I be setting? And I believe you need to be looking at goals in each of the five purposes. You need to be looking at goals that relate to, uh, to knowing God, uh, to, to just growing in your relationship with him. Re you know, set goals with regard to serving, serving your family, serving your neighborhood, serving neighbors. Why not? Neighbors getting, thinking about goals to reach your neighbors and, and, and how you can connect with them. There's, we've got an alpha uh, coming up, you know, thinking about, well, if I make contact, if I invite them around for a coffee or a, I, I find some, some way of connecting, have some goals. And you might think, well, okay, I haven't got enough time for this time, knowing that we're going to do an alpha again. So, so plan ahead and think to myself, how can I, how can I do that? Maybe you want to set some goals about serving in a ministry. Maybe you want to set a goal about being at Connect Group. It might be a setting a goal about, well, I want to grow spiritually and, and uh, I just want to kind of, it might just be coming to the Sunday morning prayer meeting prior to this service. Any number of things that this week you could already say, and I'm going to set a goal and I'm going to set that I want to be Daniel Strong. I want to be um, um, what God has designed me to be in order to accomplish the things.